This is Lemmy with RevZilla, here to talk to you today about motorcycle ABS. Let's at least just talk about what ABS is. I'll give you a quick, very layman's definition. So what ABS does is a computer controlled system and it monitors wheel spin on your motorcycle. It sort of can figure out when you're losing traction. Now, if you happen to lose traction under braking, what the ABS system will do is momentarily step in to relieve hydraulic pressure in the brake lines, whether it's your front brake or your rear brake, it'll sort of step in, cut some of that hydraulic pressure and then reapply it very quickly. And it does this many, many times a second until it senses that the tire has regain traction on the surface, whether that's the road or the dirt or wherever you happen to be riding around. This helps most riders in most situations. So this raises the question, why would anyone be opposed to this system on their motorcycle? You've got really three reasons why people might be opposed to ABS. Two of them are what I would call pragmatic and one of them is more philosophical. Let's talk about the practical ones. The first is riders who are performing at a very high level. If you have clean, dry pavement where you are a very accomplished rider, you may be able to outbreak ABS brake and bring the bike to a stop faster than an ABS equipped bike can. This happens a lot off-road. You will see off-road riders lock up the rear wheel in order to change the direction of the motorcycle very, very quickly. There are several ways that ABS manufacturers sometimes mitigate this. Sometimes ABS can be turned off entirely. Sometimes it can be turned off on the rear wheels. If ABS is sort of stuck on all the time, there are some off-road riders who object to it, and I think that's a valid viewpoint. Now, there's a second practical reason someone might not be interested in ABS, and that's simply because it adds cost and complexity to a motorcycle. So there are more pieces on an ABS bike than on a bike with standard, you know, conventional brakes. And those pieces do cost money and the manufacturer is not going to simply absorb that cost. You're going to pay for that when you head down to the dealer and you pick up a new motorcycle. Now the issue of cost gets a little bit fuzzy when you start considering economies of scale and manufacturing and the ability of offering a non-ABS bike and an ABS bike. It starts to get a little bit odd there. However, um, just on a one bike basis, if you look at it, ABS is more expensive than non-ABS. Now this is gonna make the bike more expensive. It's also gonna make it harder to work on. It's a little bit more complex, which translates either to a motorcycle that takes more time to repair when one of those systems happens to go down or takes more money to repair when you're paying a tech to repair your motorcycle. I think there are some people who object to that. And then there's also some motorcycles too where the additional cost maybe doesn't make so much sense. It's easy to hide ABS on a $25,000 bike as a little additional feature. However, if you're looking at a motorcycle in the $2,000 price range, obviously that represents a much bigger increase in the cost of the motorcycle. Now we get to the philosophical point. I think this one is kind of difficult to wrap your head around and it's also probably the most ethereal to understand. Consider for a moment, American motorcyclists are generally a pretty independent lot. However, when they walk into a dealership now, fewer and fewer motorcycles have a non-ABS option. Now, there's no American law in the books at the time I'm shooting this video that says that a motorcycle has to have ABS. However, there are other countries that do demand ABS on motorcycles. Now the motorcycle companies don't want to make 87 different regional variants of a motorcycle. So a lot of them have moved to simply offering ABS as standard on a motorcycle and jacking up the price on all of them just a little bit. So I think there are riders who, who are sort of opposed, not necessarily to being subject to a law of America, but this isn't an American law. They're being subject to a law of, that might be, you know, put in place by another country, which we don't necessarily fall under the jurisdiction of. And it might be a rider too, who is just opposed to, you know, the laws of economics strange they, though they may be, it's cheaper for the manufacturers to make all the bikes ABS, even though it's actually more expensive for an individual rider to purchase that motorcycle. Does that make any sense? I know that sounds probably a little bit deep, but I think there are just people who say, well, I'd like a choice as far as buying a particular motorcycle. Even though that they know that that thing will help them, they still may say, nah, I don't really want it on my bike. So. Hopefully now you understand what ABS is if you didn't previously, and you might understand too why some riders don't want ABS on their motorcycles. Now I'm sure the comments section here is gonna be filled with all sorts of commentary on ABS. I will be monitoring it because I like reading what you guys have to say, what you like on your bikes. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Lem, I'm out of here.